Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. Anime Studio Pro has seen a bunch of new features with version 10. This video will overview each of those new features. Now, if you're looking for a more in-depth analysis of each of these features, we do have separate videos on them. You can find those on the Content Paradise YouTube channel in the official Anime Studio website. With that said, let's get started. Now, when you open up or create a new document, if you have an existing one open, it will create tabs for these project files, and you can continue to do so by opening up additional files. What you can do now is easily jump between project files and even copy and paste vector graphics between the two. This can make working on multi-scene projects a lot easier. Shortcuts have always allowed us to access features quickly in Anime Studio, and now we can create custom shortcut keys. All you have to do is go to Help, Edit Shortcut Keys. In addition to the three new tools in Anime Studio version 10, and those would be the blob brush, eraser, and point reduction tools, the paint bucket and freehand tools have also been updated. You can now fill in objects without welding points with the paint bucket, and the freehand tool gives you the option to hide points when you're drawing. Additionally, the point and bone tools have now been combined. Instead of three tools to scale, rotate, and translate, you now have the transform points tool. The same applies with the Transform Bone tool. There have been new additions made to the bone constraint features. Now you can do what is called Independent Angle, which locks a child bone in place so that its angle doesn't switch when controlling a parent bone. There is Squash and Stretch Scaling, which allows you to add a squash and stretch effect when scaling bones. The new Smooth Joint feature allows you to take two bones and create a smooth looking joint such as an elbow or knee, but it can be applied to anything you wish. There are Target Bones which act similar to Locked Bones, and then there's Auto Bone Scaling which works in conjunction with your Target Bones. Three new interpolation options have been added that allow you to create a Stagger Effect, a Bounce Effect, and an Elastic Effect. The bounce and elastic effects have parameters you can alter to customize the effect. Brush quality has now been improved. When you render out a file with a brush, you'll notice there is no longer any pixelization around the edges of the brush. Additionally, you can create what are now called multi-brushes. All you have to do is put a folder inside your brushes folder and add some PNG files. You can then combine these files on a single brush to create randomized results. As stated before, your bone tools have now been combined into one tool. You can easily use all three functions with this tool by placing your cursor on different spots of the bone. For instance, if you place your cursor in the middle of the bone, you can rotate. If you place your cursor on the skinny point of the bone, you can resize. And if you place your cursor on the bottom or thick point of the bone, you can translate it. Exporting videos out now opens up a separate application on your computer. This allows you to render out multiple videos. Additionally, since the application is separate, if an error were to occur in Anime Studio, such as a crash, this will not affect the videos that are exporting. On top of this, there is now a cache folder. This will save all temporary files that you render out or preview. While only one movie can be saved at a time in the render cache folder, multiple images can be saved when you preview frames. You can adjust how many files you can save in your cache folder by going into the Anime Studio preferences. In addition to the bone tools being combined, your point tools have seen a similar transition. Now, you only have one tool, the Transform Points tool, that affects moving, rotating, and scaling your points. If you want to move your points, you simply place your cursor inside the box or outside of it. If you want to scale points, place your cursor on one of the nine scale points and click and drag. And if you want to rotate, 
place your cursor on the outside of the first box and then click and drag. While drawing with the freehand tool, you will now get a more accurate picture of what your final stroke will look like. This may change a little bit once a taper effect is applied, but for the most part, you'll be getting an accurate picture as you draw it on screen. By going to File, Preview Animation, you can now preview animations in video form before committing to a full render. This video will show you what appears on the workspace in full frames, meaning there are no dropped frames when you do this. This is great if you want to preview a section of animation without committing to a full render. If you have multiple shapes on a layer, you can take the Select Shape tool, click on a shape, hold down your Shift button, and click on Additional Shapes to select them all. Now you can change the parameters of all of them. You can even use the Eyedropper tool to transfer properties over to all the shapes. If you use the sequencer and move a layer behind frame zero, you can still access frame zero on any layer by simply going back to that frame. This allows you to access your workspace at any time, no matter where your layer appears to be in sequence on your animation. If you have one or more points selected, you can go up to the draw menu and choose hide selected points. This will make the points invisible on both the workspace and the timeline. Additionally, you can hide bones by selecting them and then going up to the bone menu and choosing hide selected bones. To bring back points or bones, go up to the draw menu and choose show all points or the bone menu and choose show all bones. You can now alter multiple common parameters between different layers. As an example, you can double click on one layer to go into its layer settings. Now highlight a bunch of layers on your layers panel. The layer that currently has the darkest highlight is the one that you're editing, and any layers that share parameters between it will also be edited. If you have a filled in stroke line and you apply a second shape to it, you can then use that first shape as an outline by simply decreasing the width of the second line. This can be great for creating objects like limbs. As described before, if you use the freehand tool and turn off auto weld, you won't see any points when you place strokes down on the canvas. The same applies now with the new blob brush tool. You will not see any points when drawing. This will allow you to concentrate on the canvas and your art. Random line width has now been enhanced. When using this feature, the random line widths are now less jarring and more seamless, which in the end creates a more pleasing product. If an image file you're using has a transparency in it, you can now apply that to your textures. As an example, if we apply the through transparency option during our texture settings, you can now see the object we applied it to disappears, only leaving the image itself. With particles, we can now take a vector layer and place it on the bottom of the particle folder. By simply checking on an option in our layer settings, we can now use this object as the source for the particle. When applying threshold to a layer, fill effect, or shadow that has a blur effect attached to it, we get some interesting results. The blur will now have a more hard-edged look but maintain the roundness of the blur effect. Additionally, if you apply this effect to a layer, you can get some interesting color effects as well as a rounded off look for the entire layer. If you combine two or more objects together while using this effect, it will create a liquid looking shape. With depth of field, you now get a visual indicator on the workspace. This can help you decide where to place your focal distance and length when adjusting the depth of field properties in your project settings. Now, whenever you apply a blur effect in Anime Studio, you can indicate how strong the effect is with fractions. This is great if you want to animate out a blur effect, because now the transition will be more seamless.